you're looking to make a very simple 2D infinite runner that keeps track of your score, you should continue watching this tutorial. Greetings, it's Maxo Diddly, and today I am going to be showing you how you can make a really simple 2D infinite runner in Unity. This will be a really good foundation, so you can build upon it and add your own features and have a really simple game up and running quickly. Let's get into it. So we're in the Unity Hub. We're going to click on New. And we're going to click on the 2D template. We're going to call this 2D YouTube. And this is going to be where we want our project folder to be located. And we're going to click on Create. So once Unity has opened, we're going to quickly go to Game. And we're going to click on where it says Free Aspect. And we're going to set it to 720p. Then we're going to go back to the scene. Then we're going to go to Game Object. And we're going to do 2D Object, Sprites, and then Square. This is going to be our player. We're going to leave the player where they are for now. We're then going to go to Game Object, 2D Object, Sprites, Square, and we're going to call this Ground. This is going to be the ground we want to be on. We're going to recolor it to be green, and we're going to set the Y to be minus 2. And we're going to change the scale to be 10, now let's make it 20 so we have a ground for our player to walk and jump on. After that we're going, then going to go to Game Object, we're going to go to 2D Object, Sprites, Square, we're going to call this Enemy. And we're just going to set the colour to be red. And we'll move the enemy to the side for now, but it doesn't matter where it goes. Then we're going to go to Game Object, 2D Object, Sprites, Square, and we're going to call it Enemy Despawn. This is going to be the thing that despawns the enemy if the player jumps over it. We're going to make this purple. And we're going to set the size to be 2x2. Two two, and we're going to move it somewhere behind the player. You can make this invisible, but I'm going to make it visible so it can demonstrate a point. Now, we're going to click on the ground. And you'll notice it's untagged. We're going to click on that and click on add tag. And we're going to make two tags. We're going to do ground and enemy. Then we're going to click on the ground again and we'll go back to tag and assign the ground tag. For the enemy we're going to assign the enemy tag. After that we're going to go to the player, we're going to click on add component, we're going to type in rigid body and we're going to do rigid body 2D. We'll set the gravity scale to 2 and we're going to add another component. We're going to type box and then select box collider 2D. We can leave it as the default size. Now we're going to go to the ground. We're going to add a box collider 2D. So we can click on that component and then type in box and then click on box collider 2D. This is to make sure the player doesn't fall through the ground. Then we're going to go to our enemy. We're going to click on add component, type in box collider 2D. And we're going to set this to be a trigger. And you'll see why in a moment why we need to do this. After that we're going to go to our enemy despawn. We are then going to do rigid body 2D. It can have the default values. And then we're going to go to a box collider 2D. And that can also have the default values. Again, you might be thinking, why does it need a rigid body if it's going to stay still? And everything will become clearer when we do the code. Then we're going to go back up to game object. Then we're going to do create empty. And we're going to call it spawner. And I've misspelt it completely as sap newy. And we're going to actually move this. So this is going to be an invisible object and it's going to be where we spawn our enemy boxes. So I'm going to set the Y to be minus 1. As that's the Y value I want the boxes to spawn on. Make sure the Z is equal to 0. Now, we're going to do a little bit of coding, but don't worry, it'll be nice and simple. So in our assets folder, we're going to right click, we're going to click on create and we're going to, going to do C sharp script. I'm going to call this script player controller. Then you can double click on it to open it up. Once you have uh, your IDE for C sharp open, we're going to do three variables at the top of our code. We're going to do serialize field float jump force equals 20f, private bool is grounded equals true, and private rigid body 2drb. So this is going to be the power of our jump. You can customize this. 
Serialize field means we can edit the value in the editor while keeping the variable private. Is grounded is going to be our boolean. It'll be true or false. If it's true, that means we're on the ground. If it's false, that means we're not on the ground. We can use this to control whether or not we want to let the player jump. And this is just a reference to our rigid body. In the start function, we'll do rb equals get component rigid body 2d. So if there's a rigid body on the player, we're going to store that reference to it in our rigid body 2d ob reference up here. Then in our update function, we're going to do if input.get key down, key code dot space and is grounded, rb.velocity equals vector 2 dot up times jump force is grounded equals false. So if the space key is pressed and we're standing on the ground, our velocity will be equal to vector 2 dot up times jump force and this grounded will be false. So basically we're going to make our character go up when we press the space key while we're on the ground. And we set this grounded to false because we were not on the ground anymore. And what's going to happen is since we've been shot up, the gravity on our player will start to pull us down. So we are jumping. After that we're then going to do private void on collision enter 2d collision 2d collision if collision dot game object dot compare tag ground is grounded equals true so if the player touches another box collider we're going to check if the other box collider it touches has the ground tag if it has the ground tag that means we've just touched the ground if we've just touched the ground we want to set our is grounded variable to true because that tells our player, hey, you're on the ground again, you can jump if you want to. And that's what this bit of code does. So lastly, this is going to be the final function in our player controller. We're going to do private void on trigger enter 2D, collider 2D collision, if collision dot game object dot compare tag enemy, unity engine dot scene management dot scene manager, load scene zero. What's going on here? So basically, this is a bit different to on collision enter 2D. This is on trigger enter 2D. So remember in Unity, in the editor, when we put a box collider on our enemy, we marked it as a trigger, as opposed to just not, not being a trigger. Well here we're going to be checking if our player touches something that is marked as a trigger. If we touch something that's marked as a trigger, we're going to check if the tag of the game object that we just touched is enemy because if it is that means the player's touched an enemy and we've got some placeholder code so basically we're going to restart our scene when we touch the enemy and we're going to just load scene zero we only have one scene in this game so we're just going to load scene zero which is basically restarting the scene we're reloading our only scene in our project you should change this this is a placeholder. Maybe put in a cool, you lose screen. Maybe give the option for the player to buy their way to another life. If you want to think like the Unity CEO. Or have a really cool animation. But you can do whatever you want. And that's all of the player code. So we're going to save our work. Next, we're going to right click. We're going to create another script. And we're going to call it enemy box. Then we can open it up. This is all of the code we want in our enemy box. We're going to do serialize field float speed equals 5 and private void update transform.position plus equals vector3.left times speed times time dot delta time. Time dot delta time just ensures the speed is consistent if our regardless of our frame rate. We don't want the enemy to be moving quicker if the frame rate's higher and moving slower if the frame rate is slower. Uh, speed obviously is how quick we want to make it move and vector3.left is just the left vector direction for it. And we add that onto our transform.position and this code will move the enemy left. And we can customize the speed in the editor. Let's go back into Unity. Next we're going to right click, we're going to click on create another C sharp script. We're going to call it enemy spawner. And this is going to be the code responsible for spawning the enemy. So this is going to be all of the code. So we're going to do serialized field game object enemy box prefab. This is going to be the enemy that we want to keep spawning. We'll do serialized field float spawn rate equals two. This means we're going to spawn an enemy every two seconds. Then we're going to have a function called spawn enemy and we're going to do instantiate enemy box prefab transform.position quaternion.identity. So 
we're going to be creating an enemy. This will be the enemy we want to make. This is going to be where we want the enemy to be. In this case, it's just going to be where our spawner is. And quaternion.identity, that just means keep the rotation the same as the enemy spawner. And in our start function, we're going to do invoke repeating spawn enemy, which is the name of this function, but as a string. 0f, meaning we want to call this spawn enemy right away. And spawn rate is how often do we want to repeat calling the spawn enemy function, which is what re invoke repeating does. Basically, for the rest of the game, we're going to call this function every two seconds or every three seconds. And that's all we need to do for the enemy spawner. We've got one more script to write, a little bit more dragging and dropping, and then we're done. We are nearly there to having a game. We're going to go back into our editor and we're going to right click create C sharp script. We're going to call it score keeper. And this script will just be responsible for keeping the score. So we're going to open it up. And I'll be honest, I lied a bit. We're going to do a little bit more than just keeping the score. So this is all of the code. We're going to do serialize field int score equals zero. Basically, this is going to be our score variable to keep count of how many boxes we can jump over. Serialize field just means we can see it in the editor because we're not going to be doing UI canvas stuff in this tutorial. That's going to be in the next tutorial though, so definitely subscribe if that's something that would interest you. Then we're going to do private void on trigger enter 2D collider 2D collision. If collision .game object compare tag enemy score plus plus destroy collision .game object. What's going on here? So you know how our enemy is marked as a trigger? Well basically, if it touches the player, the player dies. However, if it touches our scorekeeper, we're going to destroy the enemy object. And we're going to increment the score by one because if it gets to the scorekeeper, that means the player didn't touch it, meaning the player jumped over it, and that means we need to give the player a point. And when something touches our scorekeeper, we're just going to check if it's got the enemy tag. If it has the enemy tag, that means it's an enemy. Let's get rid of it. Let's give the player a point. We're all happy. And that's actually all the code you have to do for this tutorial. So return to Unity. We've got a bit of dragging and dropping to do. So go to your enemy and drag on enemy box for script. And we're now going to drag our enemy object into the assets folder. After that, we're then going to delete the enemy from the hierarchy, but the enemy will still remain in our assets folder. And we've created a prefab. I won't go into what a prefab is to keep it, but to keep it really simple, it makes it really easy for us to make multiple enemies that are all the same because we can edit the prefab and any enemy we have in the Unity game will be updated. And then we're going to go to enemy despawn and we're going to drag and drop our scorekeeping script onto it. Then going to go to our spawner object that I can't spell and we're going to put in enemy spawner and then we're going to drag and drop the enemy prefab into the enemy box prefab field. Then we're going to go to our player and we're going to drag and drop the player controller onto it. Then we're going to set the Y of our player to be minus one, meaning it's on the ground, which is what we want. Then we're going to save our work and this should all just work. And look, we can jump over our player. However, our jump force is a bit high. So we're going to stop and go back to the player. And we're going to set a jump force to be something like 10. Because 20 was a bit excessive. But we actually kind of suck. But yeah, look, we can jump over now. And you might be thinking, but Max, how do we know we're getting points? Well, we're going to pause and we'll click on our enemy despawn object. And as you can see, we've got the score there. Then if we hit unpause and jump, as you can see, it's going up. So thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed and subscribe for more tutorials.